Blessed be the Holy One and Living God. Glory to God forever and ever. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, you are always more ready to hear than we to pray and to give more than we either desire or deserve. Pour upon us the abundance of your mercy, forgiving us those things which our conscience is afraid and giving us those good things for which we are not worthy to ask, except through the merits and mediation of Jesus Christ, our Savior, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Our first reading is from the book of the prophet Habakkuk. The oracle that the prophet Habakkuk saw, O Lord, how long shall I cry for help and you will not listen? or cry to you violence, and you will not save? Why do you make me see wrongdoing and look at trouble? Destruction and violence are before me. Strife and contention arise. So the law becomes slack and justice never prevails. The wicked surround the righteous. Therefore, judgment comes forth perverted. I will stand at my watch post and station myself on the rampart. I will keep watch to see what he will say to me and what he will answer concerning my complaint. Then the Lord answered me and said, write the vision, make it plain on tablets so that a runner may read it. For there is still a vision for the appointed time. It speaks of the end and does not lie. If it seems to tarry, wait for it. It will surely come, it will not delay. Look at the proud. Their spirit is not right in them, but the righteous live by their faith. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The appointed psalm for today is a portion of Psalm 37. Do not fret yourself because of evildoers. Do not be jealous of those who do wrong, for they shall soon wither like the grass and like the green grass fade away. Put your trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and feed on its riches. Take delight in the Lord, and he shall give you your heart's desire. Commit your way to the Lord and put your trust in him, and he will bring it to pass. He will make your righteousness as clear as the light and your just dealing as the noonday. Be still before the Lord and wait patiently for him. Do not fret yourself over the one who prospers, the one who succeeds in evil schemes. Refrain from anger, 
leave rage alone. Do not fret yourself. It only leads only to leave to evil. For evil doers shall be cut off, but those who wait upon the Lord shall possess the land. Here ends the psalm. A reading from the second letter of Timothy. Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God, for the sake of the promise of life that is in Christ Jesus. To Timothy, my beloved child, grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and Christ Jesus our Lord. I am grateful to you, whom I worship with a clear conscience, as my ancestors did, when I remember you constantly in my prayers night and day, recalling your tears, I long to see you so that I may be filled with joy. I am reminded of your sincere faith, a faith that lived first in your grandmother Lois and your mother Eunice, and now I am sure lives in you. For this reason, I remind you to rekindle the gift of God that is within you through the laying on of my hands. For God did not give us a spirit of cowardice, but rather a spirit of power and of love and of self-discipline. Do not be ashamed then of the testimony about our Lord or of me, his prisoner, but join with me in suffering for the gospel relying on the power of God, who saved us and called us with a holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace. This grace was given to us in Christ Jesus before the ages began, but it has now been revealed through the appearing of our Savior Christ Jesus, who abolished death and brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. For this gospel, I was appointed a herald and an apostle and a teacher. And for this reason, I suffer as I do. But I am not ashamed, for I know the one in whom I have put my trust and I am sure that he is able to guard until the day what I have entrusted to him. Hold to the standard of sound teaching that you have heard from me in the faith and love that are in Christ Jesus. Guard the good treasure entrusted to you with the help of the Holy Spirit living in us. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Praise to you, Lord Christ. The Apostle said to the Lord, Increase our faith. The Lord replied, If you had faith the size of a mustard seed, you could say to this mulberry tree, 
be uprooted and planted in the sea, and it would obey you. Who among you would say to your slave who had just come in from plowing or tending sheep in the field, come here at once and take your place at the table? Would you not rather say to him, prepare supper for me, put on your apron and serve me while I eat and drink? Later you may eat and drink. Do you thank the slave for doing what was commanded? So you also, when you have done all that you were ordered to do, say, we are worthless slaves. We have done only what we ought to have done. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. May God's word fill our hearts this day. Today we speak of the power passed on to us by our ancestors and forebearers in the faith. When I was a kid, I used to run around in my backyard with my towel around my neck like a cape and run around with my PF flyers pretending to be like my favorite superhero. I actually believe that these sneakers were magical and could have me run faster than any other human being. Playtime was often outside and involved imagination and at an age that one might conclude as impressionable. It was not yet marred by skepticism, disappointment, or other evils of our time. Who was your favorite superhero? Batman? who could swoop into any mayhem and find fight crime in Gotham City. Superman, perhaps, who was faster than a speeding bullet and able to leap tall buildings in a single bound. Or perhaps Wonder Woman and her multifaceted power base, including a less known but particular ability to talk to animals. Spider-Man and his life saving antics and all the while fighting crime, swinging from web to web. How about Dora the Explorer? Buffy the Vampire Slayer? The list could go on and on and on. Many of these figures have grown out of folklore or mythologies and other happenings that have attributed to them these extra special powers. I think of superhuman powers and the bombastic wrestler who bump, thumps his chest and claims to be the greatest that fighting has ever fought. We often glorify our sports heroes to be the greatest of all time, like Serena Williams or Tom Brady, and perhaps Josh Allen, if he gets to that stage. This is often what keeps their followers captivated, after all. The more magical, the greater the exaggeration, the more adventure, the more special effects, the greater the ticket sales. For the most part, many of our early beliefs were formed with these dualist images of the good against the evil often present in our greater-than-life heroes. Yet life and wisdom often teach us that morality is not always that black and white, not always that easy to parse out the good from the evil. We learn that sometimes evil is present in the hearts of the good. And yes, sometimes the feared, the demonic, the accused possessed within the potential of goodness as well. Interestingly enough, our church tradition has superheroes of our own, individuals who have stepped out in the faith amidst the hardships and difficulties of life and de demonstrated their trust and belief in God. Many of these saints were no different than you or I. They lived lives that were often hardly stellar, and some were downright sinful. 
Yet in the midst of this, they responded to God. They responded to God's urgings in faith. On this first weekend of October, our thoughts are rally around St. Francis of Assisi, who became known, became, because of his choices, he became known to leave the luxurious life of his upbringing and take on the life of the poor, the poor beggar. In doing so, his actions spurred a whole movement of people known as the Franciscan Order to flourish as it continues to challenge the church to recognize the very presence of God amidst the poor and the outcast. For many, he was indeed a superhero. Sometimes we limit our faith in God to the magical and the miraculous. For God is present when good things happen and also when things go wrong. But when things go wrong, we presume God is absent or deaf to our pleas. God is relied on when all else has failed and we suspend reason and begin to toy with the supernatural. And sometimes we just give up. We stop calling. And other times we erroneously believe that our circumstances, our troubles, our difficulties determine God's movement in our life. And we sometimes mistakenly call that faith. But faith, how do we define it? There's one definition that stays with me is faith is believing in God in all times. During the successes and the failures, the mystical and the mundane, the triumphs and the defeats. God is all in all. Today's scripture could be said to be packed with wisdom from Habakkuk to St. Paul to Jesus. Habakkuk speaks like Yoda to the young Padawan Skywalker that he needs to pay attention to the spirit or force with him or the force within him and not succumb to the other distractions that will lead him to the dark side. And as we know how the story goes, the force never left him, even in the midst of his darkest hour. Paul reminds us and invites us as Christians to join him in living the gospel, in placing our hearts to trust in God. He reminds us that it is not a spirit of cowardice, but rather of love and self-discipline that we are called to. That our faith, our trust is powerful. And we can endure the sufferings and tribulations that come with life, even through prison, even through torture, and yes, even through death. Might it be true that we might be afraid of our own God-given power to be successful? Might we be afraid that God dares to live with us even in our weakness? A power as humble as a mustard seed and yet filled with the promise that God has established with us allowing us to achieve far more than we could ever ask or imagine. The power of faith, believing in God, who is all in all. Amen. As testimony of our faith, let us recite together the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, 
maker of heaven and earth, of all that is, seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Intercessions for October 2nd. These are the intercessions, the prayers of the people. Gracious God, we pray to you this morning with our hearts open to know your peace. To the following petitions, please respond. We pray for your churches to speak out for human rights and equality of all your children with love and compassion. We thank you for St. Luke's Church, a people serving as a vessel of your love, reaching out into the community to serve. Bless Bishop Steve and Ken, our rector, as they strive to lead us in the spirit of love, joy, patience, kindness, and generosity. Bless our vestry, Sherry and Gail, and all who serve others through your church in ways both seen and unseen. In the Anglican cycle of prayer, we pray for the Anglican Church of Canada and the Most Reverend Linda Nichols, primate of the Anglican Church of Canada. In the diocesan cycle of prayer, we pray for St. Luke's Church Brackport, Episcopalians for Global Reconciliation, Reverend Joshua Barrett, Reverend Melanie DeGuid May, Reverend Susan Kohlmeyer, Reverend Christopher Luddy, Canon Tab Rubiano, CFO. We pray for our nation and the ability to continue to strive to be a more perfect union and that in all our deliberations that justice remains as a goal to reach for. We pray for Ukraine and any people under attack, for refugees, for those struggling in fear and danger, or in need of food, shelter, and health care. We pray for all those suffering from pain, sickness, addiction, loneliness, and in need of kindness. Bless those we name now, silently or aloud. We pray for all who have died that they are in your joyous company of angels and archangels. Bless those who carry love and remembrance in their hearts. May the Holy Spirit lead us through our days with gratitude and delight in our love as we share the ministry of your compassion. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. We gather seeking forgiveness for all we have failed to do as members of Christ's body. Draw near, fear not, in God there is forgiveness. Rejoice and be glad for Christ is reconciliation. Reconciliation for the whole human race. We shall be one in Christ 
one in our life together. Praise to God who has created us. Praise to God who has accepted us. Praise to God who sends us into the world. To you, Lord, brings the greatness and the power and the glory and the victory and the majesty. The Lord is here. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. We give you thanks, O God, through your beloved servant, Jesus Christ, through whom you have created all things. By the power of your spirit, Christ was born of Mary and shared our human nature. With loving arms outstretched, open the cross for us. Jesus broke the chains of evil and destruction. By the resurrection, your will was fulfilled and you gathered all the holy people to offer your praise. Now with all creation, we raise our voices to proclaim your glory as we say. God, because on the night before he died, your son Jesus Christ took bread. When he had given you thanks, he broke it, gave it to the disciples, and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this to remember me. And after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given you thanks, he gave it to them and said, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, poured out for you, do this as often as you drink it to remember me. God of hope and joy, we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. With this bread and this cup, we proclaim the mystery of our faith. Therefore, loving God, recalling now Christ's death and resurrection, we ask you to accept this, our sacrifice of praise. Send your Holy Spirit upon us and our celebration that we may be fed with the holy, and holy body and blood of your Son and be filled with your life and your goodness. Strengthen us to do the work you've, to do your work and to be your body in the world. Unite us in Christ and give us your peace. May we praise you and give you glory to your firstborn, Jesus the Christ. For it is through Christ, it is with Christ and in Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, we worship you, O God, in songs of everlasting praise. Amen. Let us pray the words that Jesus gave us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the one body of Christ. We who are many are the one body, for we all share in the one bread. Let us pray. Most loving God, creator and redeemer, we give you thanks for this foretaste of your glory. Through Christ and with all your saints, we offer ourselves and our lives to your service. Send us out in the power of your spirit to stand with you in the world. We ask this through Jesus Christ, the servant, our friend, our brother. Amen. 
Let us pause to prepare our hearts for God's blessing. May God's blessing be with us this day. Encourage us, strengthen us, bless us with all the possibilities and hopes before us. Surround us with love and let us be beacons of that love to others. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.